Awesome. Well, let's get cruising here, guys. Well, thanks everyone for joining us to another member open house. Um, where, as you guys know, every Friday we present topics and guests that photographers would find interesting and informative. I'm Brian Sheffield, for those I haven't met, a project manager and producer here at Wonderful Machine. And joining me today, we have our talented staff and SEO champion, Ashley. Ashley, we'll give a wave. That's very kind of you. Hello, everybody. So, <laughs> so Ashley's been a staff member here for about a year and a half with us. And um, he works with photographers um, pretty much every day on search engine optimization, as well as works within our publicity department as a writer, editor, and also publicist. So today he's going to be reviewing the, the websites of three wonderful machine photographers, John Davidson from Austin, Texas, Jennifer Trace from our nation's capital, Washington, D.C., and N.T. Sinclair, also from uh, Austin. Um, Ashley's going to introduce SEO and start with an overview of what that is and why it's important for us commercial photographers. And then he'll take a look at the photographer's websites individually and offer up some recommendations and suggestions of how they can tighten the bolts down. Um, definitely want to have everyone's questions and input along the way, so feel free to throw some of those into the text chat. Um, but then at the end, we'll of course open it up to a conversation and question as well. Ashley, take it away, my dude. All right. Uh, thank everybody. I want to thank everybody for coming. Um, I have spoken with uh, NT before and maybe a, a couple of other of you uh, by phone, but um, uh, it has been a while. So um, I know this is kind of a SEO is kind of a word that's bandied about so much these days. And I think everybody's kind of expected to know it. And as a result, people are also sort of like, well, what does it really mean? Uh, I just told my wife that I was you know, going to talk about this, and she was like, what's that stand for again? Um, so SEO means search engine optimization, but most of the time what it kind of refers to is the strategy that any site is using to draw users from a search engine to their site. So it's the decisions you've made about your site that um, Google robots read in order to decide how to put you in search rankings. So if you want uh, to be uh, identified with a certain type of specialty, you have to um, have those uh, terms used on your site in order for it to show up. And, um, when we do SEO audits, uh, we go through uh, nine different categories. So the first thing we do, and, and by the way, if you're interested in reading more about this, we just published an article on our uh, member blog, which is on a SEO audit we did for Sonia Ravel. Um, the nine categories that we use are domain authority, which uh, really describes how long your site has been around and how many other sites link to it. And that affects your search engine um, position, your ranking. The search engine position ranking, uh, we go through Google Analytics to see how much traffic you're getting to your site. Uh, we talk about the URL structure, so the way in which the folder is organized on your site, for example. Uh, we talk about metadata, and metadata is probably something we're going to end up talking about a lot today, like meta titles and meta descriptions, or um, as you all probably know them through your back end of your websites, page titles and page descriptions. You probably see those uh, language instead. Um, of course, we talk about images and backlinks and site speed. Uh, we always encourage um, photographers to have a blog, <laughs> which I know uh, is kind of something that's probably frustrating. Um, and then we talk about the site's uh, navigation as well. So, but, um, so I've said a few things. Um, but probably the best way to start off is to actually start looking at a site and um, and thinking about it. But before I begin, are there any really basic questions? Uh, Michael, I see you just joined us. Uh, but and hi, Shannon. Um, well, Ashley, would you say that just like uh, you know, for the the layperson, or like you were saying to your wife who didn't know what SEO stood for, like what is that, and how just for commercial photographers, is that just to drive? Google traffic or organic searches to a particular photographer's website, right? Right, so primarily, um, and here's the big problem for photographers, 
like you all uh, lavish lots of time and attention to the way that your sites look and with good reasons, right? You know that clients are um, going over them and they want to see your images. You want your images to look as strong as possible and to represent you as well as they can. The frustrating thing though is that Google robots, and these are the things that um, end up putting you in search rankings, they never see all of that work you've done. It's, it's really kind of a tragedy um, because you spend so much time on this and like tweaking little details and alas, uh, Google robots, they don't see all of that uh, and they don't see any of your images, which is probably the most important thing. So really what they see are the textual descriptions for the most part that you've attached to those images. And that's the way that they figure out if a user should be coming to your site. Does that make a little bit, does it kind of answer your question, Brian? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm just thinking about why the, the importance, you know, a uh, photo editor typing in a New York City portrait photographer. Um, right. So, Kansas City food photography. And that's what they're probably going to be searching for, right? So mm -hmm. they may be searching for the location because they may be thinking about a shoot that they want to do at a certain place. Um, of course, as you all know, lots of times these um, art directors and creative directors, they already know lots of photographers. Um, but uh, there's still a really good reason for you to, to focus on um, your search rankings and to try to improve mm -hmm. that as much as possible because increasingly people are finding you through Google. So um, any other questions anybody want to offer? Okay, well, since, um, so while I'm going on, if you do have questions, please feel free to butt in or to even um, post something in the, the chat function, which is down below on the bottom of the, the browser window. Um, so let me take control of the screen right now. And um, in so doing, let me, um, we'll start taking a look at NT's site. NT, are you ready for this? Yes. yes. I think All right. Uh, All right. Great. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So, um, so NT, I'm looking at the front end of your site, and I'm looking at it on um, Safari. Uh, I may switch back and forth as we're going between browsers. Um, so I hope that doesn't throw you off. If it does, please, you know, interrupt me, and I'll, I'll say why I'm doing that. So, but, okay, so one of the first things I look at when I look at a new site is I um, look at three categories of metadata. So the reason why metadata is important is because these are these primary categories that Google robots use in order to organize and to um, set up your site rankings. Uh, the first category, the big one is called, or what are called meta titles. Uh, but on the back end of Photofolio and Squarespace and other platforms, they may just be called uh, page titles. Uh, they're almost probably never actually called meta titles. They're called meta titles in the HTML coding, which I'll show you because I'm sure everybody is really excited about seeing that. <laughs> but, all right, so if you look up here where my, um, uh, pointer is pointing, you'll see this description of NT's site. So it says her name, it has a vertical slash, and then it says four of her uh, specialties. So um, this, um, this is what the page title or meta title information is. And for um, your site, NT, I think, um, uh, for the yours is it may be a little bit too long. So typically the description in the, or I'm sorry, not the description, the meta title is supposed to be in between 55 and 70 characters. So that may sound like an arbitrary number and it is an arbitrary number. The reason why it's important is because Google robots are only gonna read so much and then they're gonna go on to the next category. 
So that's why it's important for you to organize uh, your meta titles with the most important data. So for NT, NT doesn't want to be identified, I'm guessing, with a location necessarily. So that's why she left it out. Or more importantly, she thought that what was vital was to um, show her specialties rather than her location. Um, so you see here um, lifestyle, uh, healthcare, travel, and then portrait photography. So probably she could cut off one of these. It really depends on which one she wants to register for. Let me pause there for a second and see if Inti has a comment and or others. So I guess my question right now would be, do you think that it's really worthwhile to put my location on there? Like, will that help me? Uh, the way I'd answer that question is by asking you another question, ironically. Uh, I would ask you, have you gotten jobs because you're in, uh, or jobs that you want because you're in Austin? Um, I mean, for sure, I work in Austin and in Texas a lot, um, but I do national work too. So, um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, I think you're getting kind of right at the issue, which is that you have a problem in a certain way and all commercial photographers have this problem. They want to be uh, identified with a location, with the location where maybe they think a lot of work will come, but they also don't want to be restricted to that location, right? Yeah. So, uh, I mean, for that reason, I could see why you wouldn't include a, um, a location. And I wasn't saying that she didn't include this before because I was saying that you should. Um, that's a point that I want to emphasize that's really important. You're making decisions and each of you has to make a decision about this and um, I mean there are better answers and there are worse answers but they depend upon your strategies as a business person, as a photographer and what your career is you know, supposed to be. So, uh, Other questions? Anyone want to jump in? Okay, so um, uh, the other thing that I'll mention right now, the, so I said there were three categories of metadata that you wanna pay attention to. The other one is um, what are called meta descriptions. So I'm showing you right now the um, HTML for uh, NT site. And you can see right here, I went and searched under description for the page and it showed me this uh, description of, um, uh, of her site. So it says here, um, Inti Sinclair is a photographer in Texas specializing in commercial lifestyle, uh, kids, family, healthcare, corporate portrait and travel photography. So uh, as I recall, this description is also a little bit long. Typically the meta description, uh, which is also on the back end of uh, Squarespace or Photofolio, sometimes known as the page description, or, um, those will be between, I believe, 120 and 150 characters. Uh, which is again a kind of an arbitrary number, but it's a number that's created because that's how far Google robots read before they, you know, move on. Um, so the uh, NT is completely right in uh, composing her page description as a sentence. That's what it should be. It's expected to be like that. And um, the only thing I would add here is that the order in which things are showing up in the sentence is, alas, unfortunately, um, indicating also the importance of these things. So if I were gonna write this, I might rewrite it to say, um, N.T. Sinclair is a photographer specializing in commercial blah, 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 and leave the location at the end, which mirrors the decision that she made in the title. Uh, the other thing is note that the order of these specialties, lifestyles, kids, family, healthcare, don't necessarily correspond to the order of those in the meta title, um, which again is just an issue or a, a decision rather. So, um, because as we know, unfortunately, people have very short attention spans. They're not even going to read, sadly, this entire uh, sentence. 
So given that we know that they have short attention spans, how can we make the best decisions to make sure that they you know, grab this content? Um, let me stop there for a second and see if there are questions. Oh, Mary Beth, it looks like you have a question. No, okay. Uh, anybody else? Yeah, can I, can I just uh, try and ask something? Um, yeah, please, you, thank you. Um, the, this is, I presume, is the homepage for this particular website. Um, would, uh, generally on a website, would you not sort of uh, maybe have um, a select key phrase on each page? Uh, or is this the right, correct way to do it? Just having a home page with all your uh, categories on it. Does that um, make any sense? Uh, yeah, yeah, no. Um, you do want to have some, uh, probably some phrases repeated, like for example, so the other question I thought you were going to ask is, is, should this description be unique for each page? Yeah, that's, that's kind of what I meant. Okay, well then the answer to that is definitely yes. Um, but it would be good if when you make it unique, you might, you know, do it in such a way that you're still emphasizing the important things that you want to show up for in search engine uh, results, right? So you're, sh um, so let me show you what NT has done, which I think is actually pretty brilliant. And it, sh it works best when I show you in um, uh, Safari. So um, this goes back, this isn't a technically a meta description issue, but it is a, um, an issue about um, making each page unique. So if you look here up at the top, her meta titles for each page are unique and they include what we would call like a caption or a description. Um, if it's just a portrait of a woman with a rainbow light on her face, which is lovely, um, sadly people are probably not gonna search for that on Google. Uh, but if, as many of you have, like portraits of people that are well known, you definitely want their names inside your, um, inside those descriptions because, you know, you'd want your images to show up on a search for them. So similarly, like, um, so Inti in this description used the word portrait, which of course is perfect because that's what she's doing. Um, and then it changes for each individual one. So let me move here. So this is portrait of a woman standing in a tropical rainforest. And, and here, so she's got actually a name here of a person, which is a good idea because now it's gonna show up under the search results for that person. Um, uh, so let me pause there for a second and see if, uh, Simon, did you have anything else to add? Were the parts of your question that I wasn't answering? No, um, it just, it's just obviously this site's laid out slightly different to uh, my site and probably a lot of other people. So I'm just wondering how these, each of these images have got their own uh, meta title. Um, that wouldn't always show up depending on the layout of the site, would it not? Uh, it does. And so that's a great question you asked, uh, Simon. So you're, you're using different um, platforms, Squarespace, um, uh, NT is on Photofolio. And then in addition to that, when you go on to these platforms, you purchase a specific template and you decide which one is going to work for you. And I suspect, uh, depending on the amount of money that you pay, uh, you have more or less options. Uh, most of them will have a feature, I know that Photofolio does, uh, called like a global, um, what is it called, global browser something, where it will transfer the title from one page to all of the pages. Um, and you want to turn that off if you're going to be able to provide unique information to each of these, uh, for each of these pages. So um, I don't know if uh, Squarespace has that, so, but I suspect that they do. Um, but it would depend both on the template that you're using uh, as well as the platform. Um, so, but one thing I would do if I were you and you didn't know, I would go and search uh, for your platform's name and then I would search metadata and uh, under support. And I would see, well, what options does Squarespace give me in order to make these changes? 
Um, so let me pause there again and see if there are other questions. Thoughts? Um, is is the is there a limit to how short or long these titles should be? And in this particular case, do you think I would be better served by putting her name at the beginning of the sentence and the description of what she does afterwards? Her title? Yeah, yeah no, I mean, this is a, a truncation question about where does the Google robot stop reading and you want it earlier rather than later. Yeah, okay. Um, so uh, I think, so uh, the meta titles are supposed to be between 55 and 70 characters, but, um, and then, I mean, as we like to joke, less is more, which really is actually real. I mean, less sadly is more, uh, but it's especially less is more when you're talking about websites and what information people can um, gather or comprehend from text. Uh, the meta descriptions that I was just talking about, those are between 120 and 150 uh, characters. And that's for the image titles. Is that what you're talking about? Uh, well, the, the meta description is actually for the pages. I haven't even right. gotten to the image descriptions. But frequently, like on your site, um, I can't remember, are they unique to, yes, they are. They're unique to each, um, to each image. And they page. are. So, yeah. um, so that's really what you should be doing. And they and those and so you're saying that should be like between 120 and 150, but lesser, yeah. better. Okay. That's right. Yeah. Thank you. Uh huh. And uh, I don't think I mentioned this, but meta descriptions are written in natural language. Yes. So you're not just writing keywords. You're writing. Right. I mean, you are writing keywords, but not, you know, like you think about keywords. So. Any other I have a question? Yeah, I've got a question. You said um, that you guys used the, the phrase less is more. And it, perhaps that touches on a question I was going to ask about whether or not you should try to max out on the, the characters that Google will read or not. Yeah, like if you can use between 120 or should use between 120 and 150 characters for a meta description, should you try to go should you fill it with as many characters that are readable by Google or, or not for some reason? Well, that's a great question, Michael, and I'm not sure that I have a, a good answer for it. But let me kind of answer it by talking about something else, which is what's called keyword stuffing. So one of the things that's become taboo in SEO is doing what's called keyword stuffing. So back mm -hmm. in the early days of the web, everybody would create a site and they'd add in a whole bunch of different keywords and they'd add those keywords because those were the things that they wanted to be um, identified with. And mm -hmm. Inti and John Davidson and Jennifer Chase equally also have the option and all of you should have the option on your site to include what are called meta keywords. The problem was that people of course abused this and so they would put New York photographer, New York photography, uh, Boston photography, Boston photographer, right? They'd put Boston um, lifestyle photographer. So they would repeat these terms over and over and over again in hopes of identifying for that. And you want to avoid anything that looks like keyword stuffing. So you don't want to re reiterate or repeat content in one of those categories. Um, I don't know that you necessarily need to fill it to the brim, so to speak. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, uh, just as just an interesting aside, yeah. your this reference to keyword stuffing made me think of something that I suppose would be an example of it. Years ago at the Photo Expo in New York, I heard a guy talking. This guy from Detroit, and I, he may have sort of like gotten onto SEO before many other photographers in the market had, and he had his homepage of his site scrollable so that you know you could. You could click into a gallery from what appeared on your screen when you loaded his site, or you could scroll down and see a bunch of text. And in that text, which was not sort of like overtly obvious, it was there to be seen if you did scroll down, but I don't even know that it was made plain that one could or ought to certainly uh, scroll down on his homepage. But in that text, hello? Uh-huh, yeah, I'm still here, I'm listening. In that text beneath what 
loaded on his homepage, but still on his homepage. He had Detroit photographer, New York photographer, Los Angeles photographer, San Francisco photographer. And he had that for like every major city in the U.S. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, back in the 90s and the aughts, like that was actually a sensible strategy. But, you know, Google caught on to this. And at a certain point, they said, if you're going to do this, we're going to, you know, to penalize you for this. So, uh, so now they will lower you in uh, the rankings if you do things like this. Okay. So, because, you know, sadly, there are people, you know, who are just paid to do this. They're on what are called like link farms and they're creating these sorts of things. Mm -hmm. So, other, uh, any other questions? Um, okay, so if there aren't other questions, let me go back to um, uh, the uh, NT site. So there, I said there are three categories of uh, metadata and the third one uh, is what's called meta keywords. And I think I've already kind of spoken to that, but at any rate, um, you can use meta keywords. I don't want to tell you that you shouldn't use them. You should probably use a few of them, uh, but do not, um, definitely do not stuff, do not repeat terms. And um, so be very sparing. According to Google, they don't actually use this category anymore. So if we look at NT's site, um, and here I'm going to, let me see here. I have a special uh, app that tells me, plugin that will tell me if she has any keywords. I don't remember you having any keywords. So you can see here that it has no keywords. I should probably put some in. <laughs> uh, it really, it's up to you, honestly. You can add a few, but according to Google, they don't even read them anymore. So uh, I think it probably wouldn't hurt. So if it wouldn't hurt, you might as well take advantage of it, right? Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, and of course, what Google says and what Google does are you know, two different things. So now, Ashley, are we talking about uh, meta keywords on the page of each image, or actually in the image file right now? Okay, great question. Thank you for saying that, Brian. We're talking about meta keywords in the um, in the page, not in the image. Okay. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. But my, my um, you know, not to steer away from this too much, but my recommendation is put those keywords definitely in your image files because uh, clients are constantly downloading work from photographers' websites and stuffing them in folders to be searched later on their computers for, for when they're looking for appropriate photography for a project. Yeah. Uh, Michael, did you have a question? No, just... Just hearing what Brian is suggesting. Okay, sorry, your your uh, image was uh, was highlighted. So, um, all right. Well, um, so the other thing uh, that I just want to say briefly about NT site um, uh, is that I mean um, that what I really like about her site is that she has menu items here on the left that correspond to the specialties that she wants to be identified with. And uh, the reason why that's important is because these menu items correspond to the site structure. And that's something that Google recognizes and reads when it looks through your site. So um, you want to have folders or um, you know, galleries that are titled portraits or travel or kids and family, because those are things that show up. So um, let me stop there for a second, see if anyone has questions about that. So the, so the navigation, the navigation uh, words should match the pages they're going to, the galleries are going to. Yeah, because I, uh, these Google robots will read these words and then it will try to ma make sure that they match the URLs. So, okay. uh, yeah. Um, and the other thing is, let me just say this really quickly. I'm certainly some of you have probably done this. Let me show you this. Um, so I'm going to go back to uh, Safari here, open a news window. And then I'm going to write in NT St. Clair, and I'm going to see what shows up. So it's going to show me her site, 
And sometimes when I do that, it's gonna show me not only her site, but also, oh, here, let me do this this way. And let me do this one more time. Okay, so this is what I wanted to show you. Sometimes when you look, see these Google results, you'll see here that it also has contact and portraits, but it will have this for say, certain portions of your site that have either been trafficked a lot or that show up well for the Google robots. So it's not surprising that for NT contact shows up here because contact is probably one of the few pages that has a lot of text, right? Um, so, uh, and why it includes portraits, I don't know, uh, honestly. It really seems, sometimes it seems kind of random, but it may have to do with uh, the traffic that each individual site gets. Because um, again, Google is sort of paying attention to those things. So, but that's the reason why we always kind of encourage you to actually have text on the pages um, because that helps those uh, Google robots. And so not just in the meta titles or in the meta descriptions, but even on the page if you can. The problem though that you all have as photographers is that you know naturally you want your images to stand by themselves, right? And you also don't wanna spoil the viewing experience by adding a description that could identify something that maybe you don't identify the photograph with. So, um, so it's difficult, you, you're caught in between uh, different demands there. What are you gonna do for the aesthetics of your site and what are you gonna do to make sure that um, your site looks best? So, or shows up on Google. So let me pause there and see if there are questions. I, I have uh, some questions regarding that, but I might be better I wait till later on because you probably might cover some of it. Okay. Uh, well, uh, unfortunately, two of the people that we had planned on having today aren't here. Um, and um, since I, I'm going to do this completely by random, I did get a number of requests. And of those, I know, uh, Simon, you were one of them. I think you were one of the earlier ones. So I hope you don't mind if I take a look at your site and go and talk about that with everybody. As long as you're kind. Okay. <laughs> I'll try to be. <laughs> um, so let me again share the screen. All right, so let's look at, first let's look at it in, um, uh, so Simon and photography. Uh, all right, so first we're gonna look it up under the, uh, the Google results. And here you see what I was talking about, these subheadings. You know, even on, according to Google, they don't have a name for what these are. They're like sub results. Uh, there is actually a page on Google's site and their support where they call them plain blue text, which, you know, isn't terribly helpful. But uh, so not surprisingly, one of the things that shows up here is uh, Simon's blog and it shows up because his blog is going to actually have language on it, right? So, but let's go to the actual site. And when it comes up, let me close these. Um, when it comes up, oh, I have to create a new one, sorry. So note here, here is uh, the uh, meta title that Simon has used. So it says, perhaps not necessarily because he wants to, but it says image overview. Uh, it says Simon Plant photographer and filmmaker, right? So obviously the latter of those two things is really important image overview may have to do something with the site, uh, the structure of this page. Yeah. Um, so that might be something you might wanna adjust if possible. Um, but, uh, so let me now look at it in, um, uh, in Chrome. And so, the reason why I'm looking at a Chrome is to use this plugin that you see up here from Moz, which any of you can get. It's a plugin uh, for your Chrome browser, assuming you're using Chrome. And when I hit this button right here, it shows me a page analysis. So it shows me the page title, which is what I was talking about before, which is the meta title. It shows me the page description, 
Um, <clears throat> and note over here, it shows me the number of characters. So Simon's right on target with how long he wants his meta title to be. Um, and he's got a fairly brief meta description that's in natural language, but he doesn't have his name here. And he should probably have his name. Um, cutting out a convenient overview of some of my, this uh, sounds like the description of this particular page, but uh, I should say Simon Plant is a, you know, lifestyle uh, and interior photographer, etc. cetera. Um, let me stop there for a second and see if there are questions. Simon, uh, in particular, if you have a question, please uh, butt in here. Yeah, I, I'm, I've spent the last sort of 10 days or so doing some keyword research and slowly going through the site, renaming images and sorting out all the um, H1 tags and stuff like that. Um, I use WordPress, so I'm using uh, Yoast, which is a great help. Um, yeah. yeah. The problem problem I have is I'm, 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 there's, a, there's obviously several keywords I want to rank for. What I've done is, like a lot of people here, um, a lot of my site is, as you see, it, it is image galleries. Um, so what I've done, and I don't know if I've done the right thing or not, um, is I've had an article written uh, for one of my main keywords, my short tail keyword. And the plan was to post that. It's not in my navigation. It's sort of on the site, but hidden, and it's in a site map. And I'm going to have other articles written uh, to point to that page to try and get the rankings up for that keyword phrase. The only thing is, I don't know if I'm overthinking it, um, is I suddenly sort of dawned on me that if I did eventually rank for that keyword, it's going to go to the article I've had written, which is fine, but I don't really want to be sort of showing that on a commercial website particularly. Um, should, I, should I, I mean, I can't, I can't obviously put text, well, I can, I can't, don't really want to put text on my, say, lifestyle page, particularly. Um, am I right in thinking, obviously, if I rank for that keyword, it's going to go to that article, not so much my images. Is that the right kind of thing to do, or am I going about it the wrong way? I'm afraid that's probably, that's probably right. It's not necessarily going to reflect because it's going to be on a different domain. Yeah. So that's the problem with that strategy. It's, it's on the same. It's on the articles on the same website. It's just not on my oh, blog. It's an article a page on the website that's kind of not not navigated to. Oh well. Uh, so how do I find it? So I well, look you, under you, a blog. So, no. So I'm, I haven't put it on the blog. I've put it on a, okay. on a page, and and at the bottom of the page, you've got a site map for Google, to obviously, to be able to index it. That is my plan. Wow. Um, so. It's really just for obviously once that starts ranking, I start promoting that page. People will click on it and go and read to it, and they can link through to the images if they wanted to. But it's I've done it mainly for SEO, not to kind of promote that actual page for people to go and read. If that makes any sense? Right. Right. Yeah. That. Um... Uh, Does that make any sense? I don't know. Yeah, I was thinking about this because you sent me an email about this and. Um... Uh, but I think, um, so you'd want to be careful to make sure it's actually directing traffic to your site. So, I mean, the thing that you're trying to do is like identify yourself with lots of text that in turn um, goes to your work. And I think that's right, unfortunately, right? Google is text-based and it can't read images. So you have to get around that. Um, because the, the, other, the other thing I was going to say, the, 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 the photographer in the UK here who ranks top for the particular keyword, uh, I did an analysis on his site. He hasn't even got a blog on his site and he's got very little text, but he has got lots and lots and lots of backlinks, um, quite good quality backlinks, about 13,000, I believe. Um, that, I, wouldn't, I don't know if that's why he's ranking so high for that particular keyword, but um, yeah. yeah it, so I'm glad you brought that up, Simon, and I want to underline this point. I mean, so I mentioned before at the beginning of this talk that every, um, that one of the categories that we use for our SEO audits is what is called domain authority. And every site has a domain authority. It's basically a metric which is created by a um, analytics company that's used uh, to judge how well they rate in their specific domain. So like New York Times, for example, is I think 98 uh, as a huge media corporation. 
Um, the reason why it ranks so highly, and this in turn affects search engine results, is because of these backlinks. So the more backlinks that your site has, which to a large degree is dependent upon the time that your site has been around for other people to link to it, the higher it will go in search rankings. So the person that you're talking about, Simon, has if he's got 13,000 uh, backlinks, that means that his site has probably been around for a while. Yeah. And, um, and that's the reason why it's so popular. So, um, can, I, can I ask another question on top of that, re referring that? I recently rebranded about uh, 18 months, two years ago, and I, my old site was, has been around for oh, the mid 90s. Um, and I redirected that to my new domain. Would I still get any kind of uh, juice from those uh, from that older site for the lentils being around? I take it not. Um, I think it would definitely change your your um, your domain authority situation. Yeah. So, uh, but um, yeah, it would definitely change. It will, it will affect it. Unfortunately, it won't be a seamless transition between those two. No. Okay. Uh, other questions other people have? Um, is there even I just wanted to point out that unfortunately I had my name in a way that wasn't helpful. So we did talk and I have been here the whole time. Oh, John, I'm so sorry. No, that's, I, I had my name in as something other than John Davidson. Okay. Also, I was on mute, which wasn't helpful. But anyway, okay. I just wanted to throw that out there. All right, well, why don't we, uh, um, Simon, if you don't mind, why don't we switch over to John? Um, Sorry, Simon. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. That's a, that was a bonus for me. I, I'm, I'm just very glad to kind of uh, ask that question. It's been bugging me for a few days. Yeah, no, there's lots of good um, questions like this. And if I can answer them, I would um, please, uh, please feel free to send me an email after this session at SEO at Wonderful Machine. And uh, both myself and another uh, staff member, uh, we we'll answer these, all of these kind of questions. So, uh, all right, so let's look at John's site. And John, I mean, uh, unfortunately both you and NT, well, you're both from Austin, so it's sort of the Austin mafia, but um, you also are really disappointing me because you guys, your sites are really, really good SEO wise. You've made lots of smart decisions. High five, John. <laughs> oh. um, so let me uh, say a little bit about uh, John's site. So um, the nice thing, so let me look at it on uh, Chrome here for a second so I can show you something. So let's look at these categories that I've talked about before. So you see here under the uh, meta, um, uh, the meta title or what's here called the page title, uh, his length is 74 and which is a little bit over but it really probably just means that the word Austin, Texas is going to be truncated. Um, the editorial and commercial part is important, um, but it also raises a bunch of questions. I mean, commercial doesn't really say what your specialty is. It tells you the kind of market that you're a part of, but does it tell you that your specialty? Um, your specialty shows up down here in the meta keywords, um, but um, well, let me... Hold on one second. Um, but um, it might be something that you could put into the page title, right? Yeah. Uh, the other thing, and I would really love to hear what all of you have to say about this because it's something I've been talking to you um, photographers about and I'm really uncertain if I'm right about this is, uh, I always wonder whether or not a photographer should actually put editorial into uh, his or her page description because are editorial clients necessarily going to find you through Google? Um, so, and moreover, uh, if you want, do you want editorial clients before you want, say, commercial clients? Um, my guess is it's probably not the case uh, because I suspect, although I, again, I couldn't be, I could be wrong is I'm not a photographer that commercial clients pay more than uh, editorial clients do. So uh, anybody have two cents to add about this? I would say my meta keywords not need updating because 
portraits aren't in there, for example, which are clearly on my website. So there's still work to be done there. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's, I mean, one of the things I like about your site, uh, John, is that you're so limited in your keywords. Uh, so it's very simple and that's great. That's exactly what it should be. I don't think probably anyone should do anything else than just put, say, you know, more than a handful of keywords. You don't want to do more than that for fear of like doing um, something like keyword stuffing. Uh, moreover, I like the way that you've organized your description, which I should just mention is only 112 characters. And so it's, it's definitely in the right, um, the right length. Uh, the only thing is I might question like the order of things. Do you want to be identified first with Austin, Texas, or should your name be for, before that? So, and then should your specialties come before your location? So that's something you might want to want to give some thought to. Um, yes. Can I just ask the the meta dis, uh, description there? Uh, what uh, John's got would that kind of apply just to the landing page? You wouldn't have that on every page, would you not? So on John's, it is different for different pages, which is sort of what I was kind of encouraging uh, you all to do before. Yeah, just wanted to check that. Um, there is a, I should say, there is on some platforms and some platform templates like a description that's um, uh, site-wide, but I think usually that ends up just replacing the meta description in every one of those pages. So I don't know if you really want to use that. So, um, but great question, Simon. Um, John, did you want to, do you have another question or? No, not really on that. Like I say, I, I just look at meta keywords and say, and think, well, that's, I mean, because corporate and business is the same thing, so that's not helpful. <laughs> yeah. Right, so that's a great point as well. Like, you have to think about that. I mean, I think the other way of responding to what you're saying, though, uh, John, is like, does everybody search for the word corporate? Do they search for the word business? Mm -hmm. um, so the reason why you might want to keep those in there is because they're distinct terms. Yeah. But, um, but it's a question. I mean, you're kind of making a decision. What is a person going to search for most? Um, so uh, the other thing, okay, so let me just point out one other thing. Um, so when you look at uh, this site and how it's read, one of the categories here is italic or emph. Um, and it corresponds to what, if you look at the way that say this tech gallery is highlighted. It says their office work culture. So ironically, Google is not reading this word tech. It's just reading office work culture. Um, I mean, I should say more like this plugin is reading that. But uh, if this plugin reads this this way, it's possible, it's very well possible that that's the way that, um, unfortunately, Google's robots could read it as well. So you want to give some thought about, about how those are shown up. Um, uh, we're kind of running out of time and um, I, the only thing that I would say last, uh, John, about your site is that um, uh, you don't have exactly a um, uh, folder structure that corresponds to your, um, uh, to your specialties. So some of it does, but some of it is quite, quite different. Right, so, uh, and that might be something you might want to change just because unfortunately those um, specialty keywords are going to be what you're going to want to identify with, so. Um, unless anybody has questions, I'm sure you do have questions. Let me touch on one or two more things that I think are important for photographers uh, that um, we haven't talked about yet. Uh, one of those was um, uh, was actually suggested by um, um, Angelo Marandino, who's usually at these things. I'm a little bit surprised he's not here yet. Uh, but he asked whether or not when you are talking about file names for your images, you should use um, dashes or underscores. Um, so this seems like such a uh, minor and insignificant issue that uh, 
honestly, I feel a little bit funny just about talking about it, but what I have read claims that in fact, you should be using underscores, to, I'm sorry, not underscores, uh, dashes to separate the individual words that are part of your file names. So let me, I'm sorry, I'm gonna take control of the screen here again and show you some examples of this. So uh, I looked at the, um, I downloaded a bunch of images from each of the people's sites today. So for NTs, you'll notice here that this is just from one particular gallery. Um, only what one of these images actually has her name in it, but uh, NT is using uh, dashes or hyphens to separate each of those words, which is important because um, Google's uh, robots will read the file names. Right? They're not just going to read captions. They're not just going to read metadata. Um, they're also going to even read file names. Um, so those are kind of things to have. And as well, in addition to this, I should just point out, as, as Brian pointed out to me, remember that creative di directors will go through sites and drag an image from your site onto their desktop and then forget about it and then maybe come back and find this image. And if your image isn't titled, it doesn't have your name in it, uh, they may not say, oh, that Indy Sinclair, she's incredible. I want to go and talk to her, right? They may say, gee, I wonder who uh, took this home med picture. So uh, that's one reason why you should uh, do that. Unfortunately, I know that kind of produces a huge set of, um, uh, I mean, it's just a lot of, lot of work to do that, which can be frustrating. Uh, John, on your site, you are also separating here the irregular images uh, using uh, dashes, so you should be doing that. Um, the only thing I would add here is that you should probably have your name prior to your client or subject. So, I have one question about that. If, we, if we're putting our name on every image, does that not come under the heading of stuffing? That's a great question, and that's something that I wonder about as well. Um, I don't think that can be the case. I mean, I think there has to be this distinction between different categories. So um, I suspect the answer to that question would be no. Um, if you repeated your name several times in the same category, like meta title or meta description, that might be stuffing. But I think as long as they're distinct portions of your site, then the answer would be no. I have a so, little answer as well. Uh, yes, please, Simon. Uh, um, I spent about five hours a day going through my site renaming images, so I'm, <laughs> I'm a bit concerned. <laughs> I, I haven't uh, used dashes. I've just left, and, and normally I do, and I don't know why I haven't, but I didn't. Um, is that going to be a, do I need to go back through the five hours worth of images I've already done and uh, <laughs> redo that? Oh, God, Simon. <laughs> I don't want to say yes, because it sounds already just like a horribly onerous task. Um, I just finished an SEO audit for a person and um, she had on her site a link to this uh, photography that she'd done for a cookbook. And um, I noticed that in one of the images, she had the two words in the title separate. And then one of them, she had those, um, you know, just kind of joined together. And when I, when I put those in the search engine joined together, it found her image. When I put them separated, it didn't find her image. So, um, I mean, yeah, I think that's probably something eventually you wanna do. So, and <laughs> definitely, this is what I try to say, uh, is going forward, make sure you always do this, right? And what about the keywords? Because I've also added some of the um, long tail keywords phrases into some of the images. Um, is that going to be a problem? Um, I, uh, I think that probably Google's robots truncate how much information they will read from your, uh, even from your file names. They're not going to read too far. Um, I haven't been able to find anywhere that says how much the Google robots read. So I can't tell you that, but I would suspect uh, shorter is better than longer uh, with those. Okay, and f finally, just for, if I may, um, what's, what benefit uh, is this? Is it just going to show up in Google Images, or is it going to help our pages uh, as well? 
I think it'll do both. Uh, it's going to show up with Google Images, and then when people click on those images, that will, you know, use uh, that will give you, you know, what they call SEO juice, right? So um, okay. it'll be showing that oh, more people have been searching for your image of woman with rainbow, right? So okay, thank you very much. Uh -huh. Simon, I'm going to jump in about uh, file renaming. Um, yeah. It's uh, it's very easy to do right on your um, Finder and a Mac too. If you want to hang around after this call, I can walk you through that. If, if yeah, I mean, I use Lightroom, but um, I've got I've got about 800 images on my site, um, and I don't need to worry about all those. But um, yeah. I've used a plugin, but I've still got to manually go in and rename it what I need yeah. to rename it. So stick around after this. I'll, I'll show you a trick that'll okay. help you. Okay, that'd helpful. be great. Thank you. I have another question just in general, like how uh, important do you think it is to regularly update or make changes to a site? So that's a great question, NT. Um, one of the reasons why we tell all of our member photographers to have a blog is because a blog is one of those ways that indicating that's indicating to Google that you're regularly updating the content on your site, and that affects the way it shows up in search rankings. So if you're doing that on the blog, you're sort of, you know, already showing Google that you're doing this. But uh, in some ways, you don't necessarily want to make lots of changes because even though Google robots are constantly going over sites um, and going over them again and again. Uh, if you make lots of changes, then uh, changes that you have made are going to be, you know, are, are going to disappear inside the um, the indexing that Google's robots have done. So, like, uh, John, I noticed that your present iteration of your site hasn't uh, even been around for a year, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, unfortunately. Um, like if you switch domains or if you make big changes in your site, it's going to take a while for those changes to register with Google. Um, so that's why you got to have to make strategic decisions and then you have to kind of sit and watch the paint dry and, you know, wait until it either starts working or it doesn't. Yeah. So, but I definitely, I mean, if you're making changes to your site every three months or so, <laughs> you're obsessive. Um, but, uh, I mean, of course I say that and I probably do that to my site. So, uh, well, I'm just wondering like what constitutes a change? So say I just decided to swap out some images or, um, I did realize that, that there are some, you know, names that I need to alter and things like that. So would it, would a better practice be to, you know, do, do that, like, add a new gallery and change a bunch of names all at once? Or would I be better served to like, you know, change a few names and then next week change a few more and add an image and then add another one a little bit later? Just curious. So a uh, great question. I would say, and, and appreciate you asking for clarity on this. I would say don't change galleries. Like if you're changing the structure or the galleries, you don't want to do that. If you want to change images, that's fine. Um, but the galleries and the folder structure of your site is a big part of the way in which Google sees your site. Uh, images that change are not necessarily going to affect the way that it shows up in rankings. So, very helpful. Thank I have you. one quick question about um, in regards to the blog: is how does a blog help um, create backlinks? Is it only through other people reading it and linking to it? Uh. That would be one reason. I, I don't know that I would say that the blog would create um, backlinks. It will, it will provide something that might uh, have people coming to your site more often. Mm -hmm. So, um, and that's, I think, valuable. Uh, but the way you get backlinks is by, you know, someone's like, you know, being a part of Wonderful Machine. And so you have links from their pages or from articles that they've written about you, um, from the, where your work has shown up on other sites. So, um, yeah. Sorry, sorry for my ignorance, but sorry. I was just going to say that I'm not totally familiar with the term backlink. What what does that refer to exactly? Thank you for asking that, Michael. Um, so. 
I honestly have only recently become kind of familiar with or comfortable with the term, I should say. Uh, but it just basically means any link from another site to your site. Yeah. So, like, how do people reach your site? Do they only, can they only reach your site through, say, Google? Can they reach it by looking at a photographer directory? Can they look, reach it by just typing in the URL? Um, there are sites on the web that are not indexed by any um, search engines, and that's intentional. Um, and, and they're only gotten to by other links or by people who already know what the address of that site is. So, mm -hmm. um, but so every, what, yeah. Sorry. Well, if, if perhaps it is by backlinks precisely, or, or is it by some other mechanism by which the existence of a blog and the regular uh, updating of a blog affects the, uh, the Google search rankings of your website? What is the connection exactly? I don't uh, have a blog, so I haven't studied this. I, I um, well, the, the idea is that if you have a blog, people are going to say, oh, well, what, did my, what was Michael's most recent project? I'd love to see what he's been up to recently. Um, and so you could create an RSS feed for your blog so that now people don't even need to come to your site. They get an email in there um, you know, that says, oh, well, Michael just published this great article about such and such. And they click on that and they follow it to your site. When that happens, Google recognizes that traffic. They see that traffic and that in turn ends up helping your search search engine rankings because your site has been traveled by all of these um you know these different people from say emailers or from other sites so so then the site and the blog are not discrete entities it's sort of like my site is michaeltoolin.com my blog would therefore be michaeltoolin.com slash blog that's or, great okay. yeah and so think about it this way so let me make this really clear uh, let's say I have a link on my site to yours. So when Google robots go through my site, they're going to find that link. And that's what's going to be the point of connection that's going to increase your search ranking. So this, you can see here how you can try to manipulate these things. You can, there are these things called link farms where people are just creating pages on sites that have to do to go to another site. Uh, and Google is aware of this, and of course, they end up penalizing people for when they see things that they think are spammy, um, are spammy links. Mm -hmm. So, but that's the way in which that connection occurs because they're reading this other site, they're seeing that link, and then they're drawing the connection between those two things. Ashley, can I jump in with a question? Yes, of course. So, is um so so the idea of domain authority is that the main thing in other words there are things that you can do on your website like proper naming conventions of your images and all uh all correct alt text and proper organization um but is all that in an effort to uh to get those uh backlinks that give you domain authority um or are they independent one of one another um they're independent so just to be super clear domain authority is an algorithm that was created by i believe uh, moz which is an analytics company and it just happens to be one that's influential um, among um, among these these companies um, but it's not one that's going to be used specifically by google but it's the way that it shows up there is going to reflect the same sorts of thinking that Google's robots and algorithms use in order to, to create a ranking. So, right, but, if, but for example, let's say your website itself is a disaster, but you have tons of, of genuine um, backlinks. Are you going to have great SEO regardless of the disaster that your website might be? Uh, no, because people aren't going to be coming to your site. You're going to have a high bounce rate. No, but let's say let's say you have good content uh, and it's relative relevant content, and those backlinks are real, um, but but you just don't have like good naming conventions or good um, these other sort of best practices. So, in other words, is the backlinks the holy grail, um, and is is all the other stuff just in an effort to sort of support that? 
Yeah. Um, that's a good question. I'm not sure if I have an answer for that. I mean, I think that the meta titles and the metadata is really important because that's what Google reads, but it also reads all of these links. Um, so I'm I just trying know. to think like if, if you've yeah. got limited time and energy, um, uh, I'm trying to, to evaluate the relative value of the things that you can do on your site versus the things you can do like from a PR perspective to, uh, to cultivate relationships with people so that they link to you. Like how did that guy, how does a guy get 10,000 link backs? It's time. <laughs> I mean, it just takes a lot of time to establish relationships, to be around, for people to be referring to it. That's the effect. And so like you can't really do, I mean, you can do something about your backlink situation, the number of backlinks. And because you create relationships with other companies and their sites and you have sites linked from there. But the other thing is just that you have to have the right metadata for you to show up in searches because that's the other way that people are going to create links to your site is they're going to say, oh, well, I just found this site. It's awesome. Let me show you this one. If you have a horrible um, SEO, it's not going to show up in the search rankings and then nobody's going to link to your site. So I think, I think that's one of the reasons people post, you know, plenty of inane or otherwise YouTube videos because it creates the backlinks or whether they post guest articles and stuff like that. It's just all about creating those backlinks really, right? Yeah, I know exactly, John, so. Ashley? Yes? Can I just pick up on something you just mentioned very quickly, which is a concern for me, uh, bounce rate. Is that something we should be, uh, as a, a very much an image-based uh, website, is that something we should be concerned about? Because mine's pretty high and I've uh, tried to address that, uh, that page uh, to try and sort of improve it, but it um, doesn't drop a lot. Yeah, um, this is something I didn't really get a chance to talk about. So this is about Google. I mean, Google Analytics will, will um, uh, chart your bounce rates. Uh, I think that bounce rates are really important because it tells you that someone didn't find what they looked for. It can tell you that maybe, so people are getting confused, right? And so they're coming to this page of your site or your site, um, mistaking it for something else. Uh, but the other thing that may it may mean is that people are coming to your site and being like, oh, well, this uh, this uh, video isn't loading. And as you know, we all have incredibly short attention spans. So they're like, well, OK, see you later. So it may indicate a functionality issue. So if you don't think there's a functionality issue, then I would say it might be about the way in which that uh, page shows up on search rankings. Mm -hmm. So. Um, yeah, I have a related question, actually. Um, I've, I've, I get a bunch of uh, bounces from my site, too. And I think that a good quantity of that has to do with one gallery. It's a portrait gallery of security guards. And the name of the gallery is Call Security. And I think that, that um, it's that phrase, Call Security, that is bringing in traffic that has to do with security and nothing to do with portraits of security guards. And I wondered in this conversation if the phenomenon of people coming to the site for something that has nothing to do with those portraits actually hurts my rankings. That's, that's my that's my thoughts as well because I, I rank for uh -huh. a few keywords that aren't really relevant to my work and I wonder if that's the reason people are coming through. Right. So this is a good question. Like, does Google know other than through analytics what your bounce rate is? Um, I mean, I suspect they must know something about that, right? But um, I mean, all of us kind of have problems that are similar to this. Like we have some content on our site that really doesn't have anything to do with what we, what we, you know, people might be searching for it, but they're going to come across it, right? I don't know that there's necessarily a way to, to stop that. It's similar to the problem that you have as a commercial photographer if you don't want to get retail traffic, right? You want to show up for photography, but you don't want people to say, oh, portraits, you do portraits. Well, my you know, cousin's having a baby tomorrow. Can you, you know, come and take pictures of this? Um, so because you're commercial photographers and that's not necessarily what you do. So, I mean, I think that the bounce rate probably is important in terms of telling you 
what you should be doing to your site, like changes that you should be making, what's working well, what's not. So how, how, do, how do we go about investigating that further? Is there, is there any way uh, of doing that? So uh, there are lots of free developer tools on, online. Uh, one of the ones that tells you about uh, site speed is called Google PageSpeed Insights. And we use it when we uh, do audits. Um, and what it does is it you'll type in a page address and then it will tell you how, how well this page um, uh, loads up. And so like if you have really large images that are slowing it down or if you have lots of code that maybe uh, is not working, it'll show up there and you can find that out. Um, so it's not foolproof, but uh, I mean, I should just say, so I kind of hinted this before, there are lots of developer, free developer tools out there that you can use. Um, and the only reason why you haven't came across them already is because, well, you're photographers, you don't, you don't want to spend all of your time doing this, right? You'd rather take pictures, so. Um, but yeah, I'm happy to make some suggestions and PageSpeed Insights is a good one, so. We're kind of running out of time here, guys. I want to wind this down. Um, Tom asked a question, Ashley, but he disappeared, but this may be helpful to other people. Um, does image size in, uh, you know, file and or megabyte size matter in S SEO? Uh, megabyte size definitely matters because it affects loading speeds. Mm -hmm. uh, dimensions, I mean, are not totally separate from that. So, um, so yes, they do matter a little bit. Uh, but primarily, I think it's it bears on on downloading and functionality. And yes, that does affect search engine results because if people are not being able to load your content in their incredibly short attention spans, they're gonna navigate away. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yeah. So, um, see, I, I dropped the the link that Ashley was talking about um, the Sonya Rebel um, SEO audit case study. I dropped that link in the chat here for everyone to check out on their own. Um, but as we're winding down here too, um, uh, if anyone wants any more information on, on the SEO audit, or we also do SEO implementation as well, which Ashley can actually uh, do the work for you guys, uh, go into your site and do the work. Um, just hit us up at seoonderfulmachine.com. Thank you. Yeah. Well, thanks everyone for joining us and yeah, have an you. awesome holiday weekend. And uh, especially yeah, thank uh, John and NT and uh, Simon for being guinea, pl guinea pigs. So I appreciate you letting us look at your sites and, and talk about them. So. Uh, thank you. I'll get it. Uh, and, and I just right. caught the, the, the last half of the program, but I wanted to uh, say what a great job Ashley did. Thank you, Ashley. Yeah, yeah. thank you. And, uh, oh. Yeah, thank you, Ashley. And uh, no, no thanks worries. for everybody for joining. Um, I, I'm, I'm available to stick around if anybody has any uh, uh, other comments, concerns, suggestions. Uh, uh, or just chit chat uh, related to Wonderful Machine or else otherwise. So, uh, so I'll stick around until I'm the last one here. Have a great weekend, everyone. Stay safe. Thank you.